We are at an inflection point with GPUs. Everything you think you knew about rendering is about to change forever. This isn't just Nvidia thinking about graphics this way. This is how the whole industry is moving. At this point, you already know that the Nvidia GeForce RTX 5090 Founders Edition is the fastest GPU ever made for a desktop computer. Nvidia is only competing with itself at the high end. The question is, how much faster is it than the previous generation's offerings? Let's find out. There are a couple things I want to touch on. First of all, in this video, I'm mainly covering gaming performance in Windows. I did request Linux drivers, but at the time of testing, the Linux drivers just were not ready from Nvidia's side. The Nvidia GeForce RTX 5090 Founders Edition is based on the new Blackwell architecture and is really designed to take advantage of a stack of new AI-based rendering pipelines. Love it or hate it, AI is here to stay. I'll touch more on this later. The GeForce RTX 5090 has 32 gigabytes of GDDR7 VRAM with a 512-bit memory interface. It uses a new PCIe Gen 5 interface and uses a brand new dual flow through design cooler. The most interesting part of it is this all new Founders Edition card is only a two slot card and it's not as big as it looks. As for pricing, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5090 Founders Edition is going for around $1,999. If we could get the Founders Edition here in Australia, I'd say that it would probably cost upwards of $3,000 Australian dollars. I've heard some rumors that 5090 stock in general may be quite limited. This sounds like it includes a whole bunch of all the board partners cards as well, not just the Founders cards. But take that with a grain of salt, because as usual, ladies and gents, rumors can just be rumors. But enough of that, let's get into some testing. To test the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5090 Founders Edition, I built up a brand new test bench with the Ryzen 7 9800X3D. I also retested five other cards for a bit of comparison. We're dropping all 1080p testing for high-end GPUs as it is far too CPU bound. I tested these cards a little differently because I wanted to see what the story was with combining raw performance and using upscaling in certain applications. The reason is DLSS and FSR have been around for almost seven years and it's not going anywhere. We all use it, but more on that later. Got some thoughts on that. Let's start off with a classic Shadow of the Tomb Raider with the highest preset with no upscaling. I only use this because I know how this benchmark scales. First up, at 1440p, the 5090 is the fastest of the batch being around 14% faster than the 4090 on average. Moving on to 4K and leaning less on the CPU, the RTX 5090 is about 32% faster than the RTX 4090 on average. We're off to a good start. On to Unigen Superposition. This is a good DirectX 11 benchmark and we're not using any upscaling at all since Superposition doesn't have any options for it. First of all, 1080p Extreme. This benchmark is, despite being 1080p, super GPU bound. The GeForce RTX 5090 is about 37% faster on average. Over to 1440p custom with depth of field and motion blur disabled, we're seeing the RTX 5090 is about 4% faster than the 4090. This is due to being a bit more CPU bound with this test. Moving on to 4K optimize, we're seeing the GeForce RTX 5090 be about 37% faster than the RTX 4090 on average. Next up is Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered with the very high preset. This one uses either DLSS or FSR 3.1 and we've got those set to quality mode. At 1440p, the GeForce RTX 5090 is around 17% faster than the RTX 4090 on average. At 4K, we see a similar result with the RTX 5090 being around 16% faster than the RTX 4090 on average. Over to Cyberpunk 2077 with the Ultra preset, this batch of testing is a little bit different. We have a development build of Cyberpunk that allows us to use DLSS 4.0 as well as the Transformer model and 
multi-frame generation. Although in this batch of tests, we won't be using frame generation. Starting off with 1440p, we're seeing something really interesting happen. The RTX 5090 is around 10% faster than the Radeon 7900 XTX, and the Radeon card outperforms the 4090 by about 6%. The RTX 5090 is also about 16% faster than the RTX 4090. At 4K, that gap opens up all the way with the RTX 5090 being around 34% faster than the 7900 XTX and around 37% faster than the RTX 4090. Finally, onto Call of Duty Black Ops 6. We're using the Ultra preset here. At 1440p, the RTX 5090 is about 1% faster than the RTX 4090. This is because we're becoming quite CPU bound with 1440p, and we're seeing this with a lot of titles at 1440p with these faster cards. Whereas, at 4K, we see a bit more of the difference we've seen between all of the cards here and the different generations, with the RTX 5090 being about 34% faster than the RTX 4090 on average. Let's move on to some really interesting tests. Let's take a look at ray traced performance using some of the new features Blackwell offers over previous generations. Hold your thoughts on this please because <laughs> I've got more to say about this shortly. First up with Black Myth Wukong. I really wanted to punish all of the GPUs here. We're using the cinematic preset, which is brutal. And I set upscaling to either DLSS or FSR, and I set those to performance mode with full ray tracing enabled on all cards with no frame generation. At 1440p, the RTX 5090 is about 60% faster than the RTX 4090. Moving over to 4K, the RTX 5090 is about 40% faster than the RTX 4090 on average. This shows how much better ray trace performance is with Blackwell. It also shows how brutal Black Myth Wukong is as a benchmark. Going back to Cyberpunk 2077 again, we're still using the same development build that we were using before, this time, we're using the RT Overdrive preset with either DLSS 4.0 or FSR set to performance mode. We have the Transformer model running here. We've got full path and ray tracing enabled with either frame generation or multi-frame generation enabled at 4K. This one is a little bit skewed because the 4090 does not support multi-frame generation and the RTX 5090 has four times frame generation enabled, which means it's actually generating three extra frames, not four. With multi-frame generation, the RTX 5090 is about 63% faster than the RTX 4090. You can call these fake frames all you like, but the frames are being generated, and on a high refresh rate 4K display, you can see the extra frames, right? More on that later. Over to Hogwarts Legacy, we also have a development build that allows us to use multi-frame generation, DLSS 4.0, and ray reconstruction. I decided to compare just the 5090 to the 4090 here, with DLSS 4.0 set to balanced with the Ultra preset with full ray tracing enabled. At 4K, the RTX 5090 is around about 32% faster than the RTX 4090. Keep in mind that once again, the RTX 4090 does not support multi-frame generation. Finally, onto Star Wars Outlaws. Once again, we have a special development build of the game that gives us access to DLSS 4.0 and multi-frame generation. At 4K, the RTX 5090 is a staggering 128% faster than the RTX 4090 on average with full ray tracing enabled. Once again, you can argue and say that it's fake frames, but they're not fake if your eyes can see them. Something that I think that may interest you is these new 50 series Blackwell cards use PCIe Gen 5 for their interconnect. So I decided that I would force PCIe Gen 4 and use PCIe Gen 5 to see what the difference in the performance would look like. This one may surprise you a bit. 
Starting off with Blackmooth Wukong in both 1440p and 4K, the difference is negligible. And this is within a margin of error, the difference is around about 1%. This doesn't mean a whole lot at all. Moving over to Unigen Superposition, we see the same thing again, with the differences being only around about 1-2%. to If that, nothing too exciting going on here. Over to Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we're seeing the same again, with the differences being within a margin of error being in that 1-2% to range. Jumping over to Cyberpunk 2077 at 4K, we don't see much of a difference. The performance difference is between 1-3% to on average. However, when we move over to 1440p, we start to see something shift. The difference between PCIe Gen 5 and Gen 4 is about 4%. Then onto Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered at 1440p, we see the difference between PCIe 5.0 and 4.0 be around 9%. And at 4K, we see that open up to around about 14% on average. Pretty interesting stuff here. Finally, onto Call of Duty Black Ops 6 at 1440p, the difference between Gen 4 and Gen 5 is around about 10%. And at 4K, the difference is around about 15%. These results were a little bit unexpected, and I'll be keeping my eye on this and seeing how it develops. But I wasn't sure what the story was going to be with this, which is why I tested this in the first place. After all of that, I guess you're interested in the power consumption. At idle, I recorded the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5090 Founders Edition, consuming around about 39 watts of power, with it hitting the spec of the GPU at full load of dead on 575 watts at full load. Sometimes we see either one to two watts either way, but this was legitimately dead on 575 watts. As for thermal performance with the new dual flow through cooler, we couldn't record a hotspot temperature because the thermal sensors are not detected properly. But as for the GPU and the junction thermals, we can see the average over one hour of testing be around about 78 degrees C with the junction temperature hitting around about 88 degrees C. This is similar to the thermal performance that we saw with the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090 Founders Edition, but this card consumes a whole lot more energy. What's the story with the GeForce RTX 5090? Well, here's the thing with launch reviews. It's early days, and with new drivers and all these optimizations, we always see performance get better over time. But the truth is, I feel like this isn't really a big issue right now. The press drivers that I got for this card were stable for me and I had no issues whatsoever. As I mentioned at the start of the video, we're at an inflection point with GPUs and technology as a whole. The way we traditionally think about graphics is slowly going out the window. Nvidia has taken the software defined approach to graphics kind of like how Ubiquity has done that with networking. Nvidia is leaning into features that could change everything but I've got some issues with this. First of all, NVIDIA does whatever they want and almost everything they do is closed source and it's locked to their own hardware. They just never use open standards. I think they have a lot more to gain if they opened up their technology to other vendors, especially in this new era of AI and especially for gamers. What about the new hardware itself though? Well. At a hardware level, they're using the tensor cores to do more while using more power. That's the major trade-off right now with Blackwell. The power consumption is higher, but the performance is better, and the major thing is that because they use the tensor cores differently, especially with DLSS 4.0, the image quality is better overall. As far as power consumption for Blackwell as a whole though, right now, I think it's a bit hard to say because we can't compare the 5090 to the 5080 or the 5070 just yet. That aside, the way we think about rendering needs to change too. Sure, Nvidia could use those open standards and GPU manufacturers like AMD and Nvidia and Intel could make more powerful GPUs by brute forcing the performance, but 
what would be the point? While I already know that some media outlets are going to complain about fake frames and them just not being real frames as a major talking point, none of them have a logical solution on how to make GPUs faster. Nvidia, AMD, and Intel have people working on these GPUs that are much smarter than me and they're much smarter than you. They already figured out that AI was the way forward years ago. The media spin is always negative, even if what these companies are trying to do is plant the seed for the future. So what are the positives here? Well, as much as it pains me to say this, AI is the only way to do this right now. Love it or hate it, AI is here to stay and it's not going anywhere. We either get on board by accepting it or we turn into dinosaurs and get left behind. Not only that, there are so many high refresh rate 4K displays coming. They're also getting a lot cheaper. How else do you expect those displays to be able to display those frame rates? AI is the only way. I'm waiting for all of the Nvidia Shield comments, but this has got nothing to do with Nvidia. This is how the industry is moving as a whole. AMD, Nvidia, and Intel are all moving this way with graphics. You can stick your head in the sand and argue about how much you hate AI, or you could accept it. It was hard for me to accept it until I saw the benefits in gaming. All these companies are playing the long game here. This isn't just a fad with AI. The most interesting thing about all of this is every few generations, there is some new graphics technology that comes, people resist it for as long as possible, and then they accept it. It then becomes a part of the technology, and after a generation or two, it becomes a graphics standard. This happened with physics, this happened with tessellation, this happened with bump mapping, this happened with anisotropic filtering. This happened with anti-aliasing. This happened with Z-buffering. The list goes on and on. All of these things are part of the tech now and you just don't even think about them anymore. The same thing will happen with AI and frame generation. In fact, it's already happening with ray tracing and then there's DLSS and FSR. When they first launched, they were pretty bad. But over time, they got a lot better, so they weren't as bad. AMD with RDNA 4 are even using AI to make FSR and frame generation even better too. So it's not just Nvidia. The fact is, with upscaling and super resolution, every single person uses it. And if you say that you don't use it, you're lying. I guess the takeaway is that Nvidia's 50 series and Blackwell are bringing all of these new AI features to graphics cards and gaming and these features are not going anywhere. Sure, some of the features might not be as insane right now, but it does give us a glimpse into the future. You don't have to agree with me. You can call this whole end of the video a hot take, but just look at history with GPUs and graphics technology over the last 25 years. I think everyone might just be wrong about AI, 